Hey, what's going on, good people? This is your boy, Brother Leon, and I just want to welcome you to the Brother Leon Show. Hey, earlier today, I put up a message called He Hates Me, Why, Amnon and Tamar. And I was talking about um, the story of Amnon and Tamar, and I put it in present day scenarios and situations that happen in relationships and also in the church. So I'm coming to you now with the second part. It's called The Other Woman's Booty, and the series is called Before and After the Climax. So I want you guys to enjoy. This is part of my throwback series, all right? I just want to welcome you to the Truth Radio Show. This is not your typical radio show, and I am not your typical minister. I am Brother Leon, and I want to welcome you to the Truth Radio Show. We are in our series before... And after the climax, and our last message was, he hates me. This message is going to be entitled, The Other Woman's Booty. This message is going to be a very controversial message. I'm going to deal with things that you may not want your little ones or your young ones to hear. So I want you to have discretion. Have discretion with this message because we're going to be talking about sex. We're going to be talking about relationships and things that happen in the church and outside of the church. And so I want you to know and understand that God has made us sexual beings. But in church, we've always felt as though that if we are feeling sexual, that that is the devil. And that is not the case. God made us sexual beings. But he also wants us to have knowledge when it comes to our sexuality. A lot of times in church, we try to cast the devil out of young people because They're starting to grow. They're starting to feel that growth. And we try to take and tame it and we try to take and put it underfoot and not even deal with it or not even teach about it. But the one thing that needs to happen in church is that we need to begin to teach about sex from A to Z. I'd rather have my child come to church and learn about their body than to learn about it from porn or to learn about it from a dirty magazine. Because when I was growing up in church... We were taught that it's wrong for you to feel sexual. We were taught that. We were also taught and and basically had people try to cast the devil out of us because we were feeling some type way or we were growing. And we didn't want to be around church people all the time. We wanted to go and spend time with our peers. And so these are the things that happen. And, you know, you up here want to cast the devil out of us. The young people, but here it is, you got a deacon in the church who's running through the choir, running through the young girls like Jesse Owens jumping over hurdles, but yet the pastor doesn't say anything about it. You have a man on the trustee board, he gives a lot of money, but you're not going to talk about him having an affair because if you do, you're going to stop the money, but you'll take these kids and parade them before the congregation and talk about the lustus in this one and how this one out here is sleeping around, but you're not willing to do that with the adults. And these are the things that I experienced as a youth in church. But I want to tell you right now is that the sins will find you out. If you are a pastor, if you are a bishop, and you know knowingly that you have people that are under you like that, or even if you are like that, your sins will find you out. Because I'm going to tell you right now, how is it that you can call yourself a minister or call yourself a pastor or a bishop? And have an affair. And then want to take and preach to the young kids about living upright. And about living holy. When here it is, you got just as many girlfriends as some of these players out here on the street. How many times have the church had to write checks or hush money to one of your mistresses? Just to keep her from showing out at church. Or just to keep her from showing up at your door. How many times have you had to send a girl out of state or send her away? Or better yet, make it look like that she's crazy. She ain't crazy, she just hurt. But these are the things that happen. These are the things that are not talked about in church. Because if you talk about them in church, then the man of God, you'll just see him as a man. You won't see him as an icon. You won't see him as the voice of God. But I want to tell you right now, today, audience, that before that man got that calling, he was just a man. And every man has sins that he deals with. Everybody on this planet today has something that they are dealing with. Nobody is exempt. 
from the greatest bishop to the littlest usher. Everybody has something that they are dealing with. And so I want to take you to this message, The Other Woman's Booty. And it's a crazy title, but you're going to understand where I'm coming from. There's a battle being fought for the souls of men. And this battle is taking place in the airwaves. You can't actually see the combatants, but you see the fallout and casualties of war. You see the fallout in our living rooms, in our neighborhoods, all centered on our youth. The battle is image and vision. At one point, African-American actors and actresses would take on controversial and demeaning roles as a means for others like them in their craft wouldn't have to take those roles. Get in Hollywood. Change the system from within. Let your work change society and be the example for others to look to. That is why some of these actors and actresses took these roles because they wanted men like Denzel Washington and men like Forrest Whitaker and women like Halle Berry and, and women like Lynn Whitfield and Oprah Winfrey to change the system from within. And even with the great work of Denzel Washington, Tyler Perry, Forrest Whitaker and Oprah and Will Smith, the battle for our youth rages on. This battle is for image and vision. We come to the place where we have to fight to keep the image of pimps and hoes from being the image being sold to our kids. We have to fight internet porn, sexting, that new thing that's out that young people just want to send naked pictures of themselves. We have to fight that. And music that isn't even music anymore, but sexual instructions and fantasies put to music. Oh my God, the Yin Yang Twins. Just listening to them, man, you get a feeling. Especially that Whisper song. I never thought that the day would come where we would be glorifying a pimp, where we would refer to ourselves as thugs, when some women in the videos are actually like what the rappers are rapping about. When they come out with a tell-all book, I never thought that that day would come where we would see a video vixen tell about all her exploits with some of these rappers and famous actors today. They have a famous book and, and even be on Susie Orman's show. Boredom has become a good sale in society. But the tragedy is that sometimes our youth, without instruction, begin to make so-called art. I want you to catch that. So-called art into reality. We see a woman have an affair with a sitting president and she gets a commercial. People make decisions to come out the closet and tell the world, I'm homosexual. I'm gay or, or bisexual. And you get a TV show on 15 minutes of fame. And I ask the question, where are the video vixens, the pimp, and the person coming out of the closet when a girl trying to do what the vixen did gets pregnant by three different men and now stuck with six kids? Where are they at when the boy who calls himself pimping these hoes now has 10 kids and can't take care of none of them? Where is the person who decided to come out of the closet and announce to the world they are homosexual or bisexual and now find themselves constantly fighting with their identity because they didn't take the time to see who they really are on the inside? They decided to be gay because it was the cool thing to say. And let's not talk about reality in the name of entertainment and art. Do I need to mention the real world on MTV where you have all these people living in a house, ain't got to pay rent, ain't got to pay utilities. That's the real world. Flavor of Love, season one and two. For the love of Ray J. Wise of Atlanta, New Jersey, and New York. I love money. Big Brother. And my favorite show. I love New York. <laughs> I will admit to it. I love New York. The purpose of this message is to open up your eyes and get you to see that God has called you to live your life with vision and purpose and not to be swayed by the voices of the airwaves and the images on TV. 
it's cool for a woman to be an octo mom. And I know you guys remember that whole thing with the whole octo mom. It's cool for a woman to be an octo mom as long as it's by artificial insemination. But let a girl have that many kids by different fathers and she's a scorn to society. The octo mom has gotten fame. She's gotten plastic surgery, a place to live, a website for items needed for the baby. But the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 25, there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end leads to death. And I want to tell you that every decision is going to have lasting consequences. Because the one thing I want to tell you is that, hey, the octo mom got all them kids, but how's she going to really spend time with them and pour into them? But this is how backwards our society is. We talk about women getting off of welfare, but yet we can put this octo mom on TV and she gets all the help she needs. But yet we talk about Tracy down the street got four or five different kids by two different daddies. And we'll take and scorn her and tell her she need to get a job. She need to get off of welfare. We're not willing to say nothing about this octo mom. Oh, man, she's cool. You know what? The, the crazy thing is, is that it's cool when it comes to different societies or different cultures. But here it is. It's a scorn when you put it in another culture. And so these are the things that I want you to see, that these are the things that are backwards. But through the grace and the will and the power of God, I'm going to destroy those whole images. And through God, I'm hoping that there will be a turnaround. Ecclesiastes chapter one. Verses four and eight to nine in the NIV. Generations come and generations go. All things are worrisome. More than one can say. The eye never has enough of seeing, nor the ear its fill of hearing. What has been will be again, and what has been done will be done again. And there is nothing new under the sun. And so just like we were dealing with those images, we were dealing with them now. We dealt with them way back years ago. We dealt with the whole black exploitation thing. We dealt with that. We dealt with that image then about the pimps and hoes and, and the whole thing way back in the 70s and so forth. And now we have to deal with it in the music today. I'm so glad that the most powerful female image today is an Oprah. But it's First Lady Michelle Obama. She destroys the whole myth and stereotype that as a woman, you have to be vicious. You have to shake your booty. You have to entertain or have an affair or marry a ball player or act like a man to be successful today. She hasn't written any tell-all books about past sexual exploits, but she is history. Michelle Obama, she is black. She is beautiful. She is educated. She is classy. She is sexy. And she is married with two children who was successful before the election and now is icon status after the election and for all time. And you got to clap your hands on that one because that is what she is. And her image is all over the magazines, all over TV. I want to take the time to destroy the negative images that come off as art. But too many times it turns into real life in our homes and communities when the airwaves of identity crisis and the battle for the souls of men come into our living rooms and sit at our computer desks promising new vision, wealth, love, and success. And these are the things that come to our young women and they tell them, play the game, girl. Be like these brothers out here. It ain't nothing wrong with using what you got to get what you want. It ain't nothing wrong with using a couple guys to pay your bills. It ain't like you're screwing them, are you? These are the things that come to our young girls. These are the things that come to our single women. This spirit that wants to destroy this spirit of manipulation. Because once you get caught in the cycle of manipulation... It'll be like a world when you'll keep having to manipulate and use people. And God didn't call you to manipulate. He called you to virtue. He called you to let the gift that is on the inside work for you. You don't have to have a man to pay your bills. You can pay your own bills. Ain't nothing wrong with getting help. But don't take and use manipulation to get that help. Don't take and use a guy 
he may come your way and he may like you, but you want to just use him. You don't look at him as a person. You look at him as an opportunity. And that should not be the case. Know that your life and the lives of others aren't a game. Don't be ignorant. People's life are not a game. This whole thing with relationships is not a game. It's not a game when this guy gets caught up with you. It's not a game when his feelings get open for you. And he loves you, but you have no sense or feeling for him at all. Here it is. This is what you tell him. I love you, but I'm not in love with you. I love you, Reggie. I love you as a brother, but I'm not in love with you. And then Reggie Hill end up saying, well, you didn't say that when you was taking my money. You didn't say that when I moved you into that apartment. You didn't say that when I was up here riding you and your kids all around and picking them up from daycare and acting like a daddy. You didn't say that. And so then you come out your mouth and say, see, there you go. Why he had to bring it there? Why he had to do like that? That's why I won't be bothered. And bam, you have a big blow up, a big argument, and you kick him to the curb. And the crazy thing is, is that that was the one that God wanted to bless you with. But because you were so caught up in these games and listening to your girls who ain't even got a man. And now you ain't even got a man because you took their advice. But like I told you in the last message, Oh, foolish Delawareans, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth. And so you have to realize that there are women out here who do not have your best interest, girlfriend. There are women out here who do not have your back. And you swear up and down that they do, but they don't. They are jealous of you. They are jealous to the fact that you are successful, that you're educated, that you look good, that you have beauty and brains. But now they're trying to make you silly like them. And you up here, sit up here on the phone gossiping and taking it all in, not knowing that your character is being changed. People are bewitched by conversation. And so these are the things that I want you to wake up and see, my sisters, that every woman does not have your back. And God didn't call you to come out here to be the other woman. God didn't make a man for you to destroy his home. You can't sit up here and say you don't feel bad about destroying a man's life knowing that he was married. You can't sit up here and say you don't actually feel bad about destroying a woman's husband. And you may try to throw it off and be like, hey, that's on her. I'm just doing what she won't do. You are so delusional. You are so off. To think that God will not require from you. To think for one instant that, you, that you're not hurting about it on the inside. You can try to mask it all day long. But I'm going to tell you this. That the way that you get them will be the way that you won't be able to keep them. Or better yet, if you sin with them, they're going to sin against you. If you got them through cheating, know this. They will cheat on you. And I'm going to tell you right now. That married man or that married pastor or that married bishop is not going to leave his wife or his church just to go with you. I don't think so. Because there's too much at stake. He's looking at the fact that, yo, if I leave her, if I leave my wife and go with her and go with this new booty, then I'm going to have to pay. I'm going to have to pay child support. I'm going to have to pay spousal support. I'm going to lose my paycheck with the church. So I'm going to tell you right now, if you're running with a man of God, you better quit running. And man of God, if you up here running these women, you better stop. Because I'm going to tell you right now, the news media loves to catch people like that. Oh my God, when Jim Baker got caught, man, it was all over the news. When that other guy got caught in Texas with the uh, homosexual, he's the one that was preaching about homosexuals. When he got caught with one, it was all over the news. But I want to tell you, it should not have to be that way. And women, you, sh you don't have to be that way. Women, you don't have to be that way. You don't have to play the other woman. But you can have your own. Like I said, know that your life and the lives of others aren't a game. Don't be ignorant. And I want to take you to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 7. Verses 1 to 27 out of the NIV. It says, my son, keep my words and store my commands within you. Keep my commands and you will live. Guard my teachings 
as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Say to wisdom, you are my sister and call understanding your kinsmen. They will keep you from the adulteress, from the wayward wife with her seductive words. At the window of my house, I looked out through the lattice. I noticed among the young men, a youth who lacked judgment. He was going down the street near her corner, walking along in the direction of her house. There you go. There's a dude, he's sneaking out at night to be with this other woman. And I'm gonna tell you right now, hey, you can go out at night, you can go to a hotel, you can do whatever, but God sees all. And I'm going to tell you right now, these women are getting hip. I don't know if you've been watching Cheaters. These women are getting hip. And so you can end up calling yourself not getting caught, but you're getting your picture taken by a PI, by a private investigator. And when you end up going to court and getting that divorce, you're going to have to pay half. You might have to go home and live back with your mama because you got caught up. And here it is, you was making $70,000. Now you're only making $35,000 and got to pay child support and alimony. And you have to give up the car and the house. And now you back home living in the basement. Let me go back up to verse six. At the window of my house, I looked out and through the lattice, I saw among the simple... I noticed among the young men, a youth who lacked judgment. He was going down the street near her corner, walking along the direction of her house at twilight, as the day was fading, as the dark of night set in. Then came a woman to meet him, dressed like a prostitute and with crafty intent. She is loud and defiant. Her feet never stay at home. Now in the street, now in the squares, at every corner, she lurks. She took hold of him. She took hold of him and kissed him. And with a brazen face, she said, I have fellowship offerings at home. Today, I fulfilled my vows. So I came out to meet you. I look for you and have found you. I have covered my bed with colored linens from Egypt. Let me just stop right here. Here it is. Verse 15. I came out to meet you. I look for you and have found you. That is how the game is played. I'm going to tell you right now that when you're up here caught in an affair. Oh, my God, you were the one for me. Oh, you are everything that I need. My wife does not understand me. My husband does not understand. You're everything that I'm looking for. And you're out here running with this person thinking that the grass is greener on the other side and the grass is never greener on the other side the same way you got to cut and mow that lawn where you at you probably gonna have to do more better yet you might get over there and jump over that fence it ain't even grass over there it's just a green piece of cloth and then you pull it back it ain't nothing but dirt when you have a wife who is willing to take care of you who took the vow seriously to death do us part in sickness and in health. These are the things that you have to notice. And I'm going to tell you right now that she done bore your kids. That she's been with you when you didn't have no money. She was with you now. The money is here. Now, all of a sudden, now you you done got your head all big. Because you think, well, yo, man, this girl really wants me. And, and my wife don't understand me. And you up here spending all this time with this woman. And yeah, this woman, her vagina might be a little tighter. Her vagina might even be a little wetter. And her vagina might even be shaving and got a heart and got your name all over it. But I'm going to tell you right now that that new booty, that that other woman's booty is not going to take care of you. When you get sick, who you going to call? You going to call your wife. You ain't going to call the new girl. You going to call your wife. You get in a car accident, you ain't going to call her. Matter of fact, she ain't even going to come. She going to tell you, yo, I got to go get my kids. Call me later. Or better yet, you end up getting a voicemail because she's with somebody else. Married men having affairs, women like being with them due to the fact that there is no fight with them, due to the fact that they ain't sweating them all the time. 
You just can't sit up here and want to leave your wife just to go with this, just to go with her. Because I'm going to tell you right now, when it comes down to your kids, she ain't going to be there for your kids. She's going to say, it ain't, it ain't my responsibility, it ain't my kids. So why should I take care of them? Why should I pick up your son from daycare? Why should I drop your daughter off at the hairdresser? Why? They ain't mine. Take them to their mom. But yet you want to leave your wife. You want to leave your bed and go with this other woman. And she may be the one that does all kinds of crazy sexual fantasies with you. She's the one that you can dress up like a maid and clean it up all over the place. Here, come and clean up over here, girl. I got something for you. Let me give you this tip. When you take and knowingly destroy your vows, God is going to require from you. Your prayers are not going to be answered. Because the one thing that God has purpose in our heart, the two shall be one. Because when you cheat on her, you're cheating against yourself. You're cheating yourself out of blessing. You're cheating yourself out of covenant. And with covenant, you have a covering. And with covenant, you have protection. And when you take and go with this other woman, you are taking off the covering. You are destroying the covenant by going with this other woman. And let me go back. Verse 15. So I came out to meet you and I look for you and have found you. It doesn't matter whether this girl that you hooked up with is doing tricks that your wife won't even do. You may be the type of man, well, yo, only reason why I'm with her is because she performs oral sex. Or the only reason why I'm with her is, the, is because she's giving me anal sex. These are the things that my wife is not doing for me. And these are the things that I want. Are you that selfish? Are you that selfish that you're willing to throw away 15 years of marriage for a five minute blowjob? Are you willing to throw away your marriage over anal sex? Are you willing to destroy your kids? Because this woman allows you, I'm getting ready to say something, but I'm not going to say it. Are you willing to throw it away? Are you willing to have that five minute piece right there? Are you willing to pay $50,000 in legal costs? Are you willing to give up your house? Are you willing to give up your kids? And the only time you see your kids is every other weekend if you're lucky. Because here it is, this woman went through hell with you and now she's bitter. And now she thinks that every man is like you. All you want is something young. All you want is something new. But you couldn't appreciate the fact that she was the one that was with you when you didn't have nothing. You can't appreciate the fact that she was with you when your mama died. She was with you when your papa died. She was with you when your sisters was going through the motions with you. She was with you. But here it is. You got this young girl. And now you find yourself the old man at the club trying to hang with her. But you can't hang with her. And all you're good for to her is just, hey, he's just a dude. He's just my sponsor. And all you're good for is paying bills and maybe having sex occasionally. But she's hanging out with her girlfriends and doing whatever and got dudes on the side. And you don't even know. And you're thinking you're the only one. Please wake up. Verse 16. I have covered my bed with colored linens from Egypt. I perfume my bed with myrrh aloes and cinnamon come let us drink deep of love till morning let's enjoy ourselves with love my husband is not at home he has gone on a long journey he took his purse filled with money and will not be home till full moon with pervasive words she led him astray she seduced him with her smooth talk all at once he followed her like an ox going to the slaughter like a deer Stepping into a noose till an arrow pierces his liver like a bird darting into a snare, little knowing it'll cost him his life. And that can be spiritually, that can be financially, and that could be literally. Because the one thing that I want you to see is that even though this other woman's booty may be tight, even though you may be hitting that thing hard and she may be coming hard and having you come hard. Is it worth disease? Is it worth the losing of your family? And even though this woman may be singing like the woman on Star Trek. Oh, 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 or it might be crazy, you know, crazy like little John. She might be skeeting all over the place. Skeet, skeet, skeet. Might be that. But I'm going to tell you, is it worth it? 
So I'm going to go to verse 23 again. Till an arrow pierces his liver like a bird darting into a snare, little knowing it will cost him his life. Now and then, my sons, listen to me. Pay attention to what I say. Do not let your heart turn to her ways or stray into her paths. Many are the victims she has brought down. Her slain are a mighty throng. Her house is a highway to the grave, leading down to the chambers of death. And so I want to tell you that there is death there when you take and leave your wife or you take and leave your fiance or you take and leave your girlfriend for this other woman. Because I'm going to tell you right now that the blessing of God is where you have to work. When you're dealing in relationships, and I'm not going to lie, women are difficult, so are men. But if you're willing to put in the work, a change can come. Like I said before, that God is the healer, but he uses many different tools to heal with. So if you got to go out here and get counseling, then get the counseling. But know this, man, you just can't be so self-centered that all you're looking at is what this other woman is doing in the bed. And I'm going to tell you, like I said in the last message, that you just can't base your whole relationship off of sex alone. You just can't bake a cake with just eggs alone. You got to have the eggs, the flour, the milk, the vanilla, some 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 uh, lemon rind, some lemon stuff to bake a cake. And you got to have the icing. You got to have the pan to put it into it. You got to have the beater to beat it up, to put all the ingredients together. And so you just can't have just sex be the whole sum of the relationship. You just can't live by coming hard alone. The word of God says man should not live by bread alone. You cannot live by coming hard alone. And so you got to wake up, man. Wake up. And know that you have a loving wife who was there with you. Wake up, man. Know that God has given you that fiance so that you can be married. So that you can have a wife to come home to. Know this, man, that God has given you that baby mama so that you can have a family. Marry that woman. Don't just sit out here and, and screw with her and screw with Tracy and screw with Rhonda or try to, you know, mess with her cousin or even mess with her mom. God ain't call you to that. Do better than that. Don't be a dog. Don't be an animal. But be a man. Be the man that God has called you to be. And I want to take you to another scripture. Proverbs chapter 30. There are three things that I find too amazing for me. Four that I do not understand. This is the way of an adulteress. She eats and wipes her mouth and says, I've done no wrong. And that's how an adulterous woman is. She doesn't care about destroying the home. She feels as though, hey, he came this way. I'm going to take it for what it is. I'm going to take it to the max. I'm going to take it to the hill. And I did nothing wrong. Because if his wife was taking care of him, he wouldn't be with me. But that is how the other woman is. That is how she is. Under three things, the earth trembles. Under four, it cannot bear up. An unloved woman who is married. An angry woman when she is married. The other woman, when she gets a man, when she gets the man that she was cheating with, she can't stand that man. Because in the back of her mind, she's going to be thinking, well, hey, if I got him through cheating, he's going to be cheating on me. And so she'll end up resenting that man because... He left his wife. The argument would be, you ain't going to do me like you did your wife. And that's what she's going to say. And she's going to say it with a bold and brazen face. But she's not going to remember the times when there was excitement with you sneaking out. She's not going to remember the times about the code that you had on the cell phone. About the code that you had on the telephone. The notes at work. The flowers. Lying about going to work and you actually meeting up with her. Or lying about the trip or going on a business trip and you took her instead and left the wife at home. I'm going to take you over to Proverbs chapter 31 verse 3. Do not spend your strength on women. Your vigor on those who ruin kings. So I'm going to tell you men. Do not give your strength to these other women. Give it to your family and give it to your wife. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 26 I find more bitter than death the woman who is a snare, whose heart is a trap, and whose hands are chains. The man who pleases God will escape her, but the sinner he will ensnare. How many times have you had your heart broken 
and in turn become like the one who broke your heart, women. You were cheated on by a man, now you cheat. Your body was used and abused by men. Now you're the abuser and use men's bodies to fulfill your own sexual cravings. Because you get to a point where you get so tired of having your heart broken that you turn your feelings off. Or you get so numb, now all it is, you know, there's no feeling involved. There's no feeling or no emotional connection involved. And like I said before, people cheat on you because they have no connection with you. And when they have no connection, don't be surprised that they can be able to do what they do. Because they're not connected to you emotionally. Your body was used and abused by men. Now you're the abuser and use men's bodies to fulfill your sexual cravings. You brought men gifts, gave them money, all to have your heart broken and torn apart. Now you tear men apart and take their gifts. You gave your all, poured your life into a man only to have lost your own life and identity. Promises were made and promises were broken and no one gave back to you at all. The tables have turned and now you're the one doing the hurting and you revel in getting guys exhilarated to bring them down hard emotionally. You like that song by Stevie Wonder, Rocket Love. Kept me riding in your rocket, gave me a stop half a mile from heaven. You dropped me back down half a mile from heaven. You dropped me back down to this cold world. You need to listen to that song, Rocket Love by Stevie Wonder. And so I want to tell you that the other woman's booty is not worth your life. And so women, God has not created you to be the other woman. You can be a woman of virtue. You can be a woman of class. But I want to take this time and pray, Lord, deliver and make free. Deliver and make free and heal the broken in heart and mend their wounds. Mend them, Lord God. Mend the heart. Mend the mind. And bring that man to his senses. Bring that woman to her senses. Bring that pastor, bring that bishop, bring that deacon to their senses. Because, Lord God, you said in your word that sin will bring you to death. That there is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is the way of death. And you said in your word, what doth it profit for a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? And I want to tell you men right now, I want to tell you pastors right now, If you sitting out here and you got a congregation and all your congregation is a harem of women, God is going to require from you. He's going to bust your thing right open. You know who you are. You know what you're doing. God is going to bust your thing right open. And I'm going to tell you women, if you know that you're destroying this man, you better come out and leave him alone. Tell him to get some counseling. But you don't want to be involved in breaking up a house. Because I'm going to tell you, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So I'm going to tell you right now, if you up here cheating, you're going to get cheated on. If you up here stealing, somebody going to steal from you. If you out here creeping, somebody going to creep on you. And so this is what I want to tell you, that the other's woman's booty is not worth it. It may, it may be tight. It may be right. It may look good in a pair of jeans. And here it is. Your wife is around here in sweatpants. But I'm going to tell you, man, work it. Go back to the place where you fell in love with her. If you want her to change the look, begin to encourage her. Go out, get her some clothes. Do those things that's going to make her feel feel good again. Begin to build up on the inside of her. And I guarantee you, it'll turn around. You just can't be so quick to just give up and to go out and get this new thing. Because I'm going to tell you right now, when the chips are down, that new girl ain't going to be with you. It's going to be the one that you marry. And I'm Brother Leon, and I want to challenge you. To be the man, to be the miracle, and to be the one who speaks restore. Restoration in your family, restoration in your home. Be that one and leave that other woman alone. Leave her alone. Other woman, leave that man alone. Because all you're doing is wrecking his wife and you're wrecking his kids. And I'm going to put it down like this. Would you want somebody to wreck your kids? Would you want somebody to take and wreck up your home? And so these are the things that you need to think about. I'm Brother Leon. Remember, think before the climax. Think. And after the climax, think. Because every decision, 
as an outcome. I'm Brother Leon, be free.